It was great to get a win on Saturday afternoon. Thought the guys played well across the board. Should give us a lot of momentum and confidence going into Thursday night's game with the Aggies. Defense played really well. We met our goal in the running game, holding Florida Atlantic to 3.3 yards per carry. Created four turnovers the way we um, determined it. One fumble, two interceptions, and had a fourth down stop. And just about all the turnovers led to points. So uh, much, much better in that area. And we've told the guys that when you start getting turnovers, they come in bunches. And uh, they started on, on Saturday. And we've got to continue to force some turnovers on on uh, Thursday night. We still had four balls on the ground. We only got one of them. And it's not that we're not trying. Ball's just bouncing right back in their hands. So we've got to continue to do a better job in that area when the ball is on the ground. Also played really well on first downs defensively. We were successful 17 of 28 first downs. Um, we had eight three and outs, three sacks, nine quarterback hits, five quarterback pressures, and we only missed two tackles for the games for six yards. So we tackle much better in this game than uh, the last couple of weeks. Still needed to improve uh, the big play defense. Uh, we gave up three big passes for 126 yards, and the quarterback scrambled one for 29. And we're, we're trying to limit the big plays and, and still giving up more than we want. We did, uh, we did finish the half well defensively. We did not start the third quarter well defensively. I think they scored in five plays in, in about two minutes. So uh, need to finish the the second quarter better and, and come back out and play the start of the third quarter, first five minutes a lot better because those are two key areas of the ball game. Uh, Sam Macho played as, as well as I've ever seen him play and he was the player of the game defensively. And then for you that are looking at awards, Sam, uh, even though our season hasn't been what any of us wanted, Sam has played great every week. So I hope everybody that has a vote will vote for him for All-American and um, he was a great leader in this ball game, as he's been all year. He's never gotten his head down. He's just an amazing young man and uh, capped off by the fact that he's chosen one of the 16 guys to go to New York as the uh, scholar athlete for the Hall of Fame. So he's, uh, uh, he's playing uh, uh, as well as anybody in the country, and we hope he gets that credit. Offensively, we had our best game, won the turnover margin, uh, only had one turnover. Uh, Garrett did fumble twice. We, uh, offense got on the second one, but... Uh, we lost the first one. We did have 10 explosive plays. They were 73% successful on first down efficiency. They had a great run pass balance. It's what we'd like to have each week. Scored a touchdown just before the half and came back for a long drive and kicked a field goal on the first drive of the second half. Still need touchdowns in the uh, red zone area. We had three touchdowns but still kicked two field goals. And, and we... I feel like we've made some improvement in that area, but still the, the offense was disappointed with the, the two field goals. They need to score more touchdowns. Still got to do a better job with third down efficiency. Uh, the player of the game was Garrett Gilbert. Uh, he had by far his best game, and we hope that uh, we see the improvement continue through Thursday night. Did some good things on special teams, but still got some things that we need to improve to, to be 100%. Punt team only had two punts, which is good. One was down inside the 20, and the other was fair caught. So there were no return yards against our punt team. Punt block and return team did a good job. We had a return for nine yards by Adrian Phillips, but we also had a block by uh, A.J. Williams. I said after the game, it's the only time I've seen a block punt go 50-something yards. So I, I asked Aaron, we must have batted it forward. Uh, that's kind of been the way the, the year has gone for us, but the guys overcame it anyway. Keiston Randall's blocked a kick in each of the last three games on extra point and field goal. He's done a tremendous job getting a great push inside and we're really, really pleased with him on, on special teams. Extra point and field goals were 100%. They accounted for 15 points. Six of six on extra points, three of three on field goals. Um, Justin made the, the field goals from the 22, the 43, and the 49-yard line. Kickoff coverage was not as good as usual. We did have three touchbacks, but even on one of the touchbacks, we had a penalty uh, because one of our guys had his hands up in the face of, of the uh, uh, blocker for Florida Atlantic. Uh, but they did average 21 yards per return. Uh, they got it out between the 30 and 40 numerous times, and, and we can't have that this Thursday. Um, kickoff return was really close to breaking. Uh, we felt like that uh, it's a, the best blocking we've had in a long time. Uh, we did okay with it. We averaged the 29-yard line for our field position, but we felt like uh, that there, there were opportunities there that we didn't get um, 
take advantage of them. We need to do a better job there because A&M does a great job returning their kickoffs. They've had two kickoff returns for touchdowns this year. Justin Tucker was the special teams player of the week. We were excited to play so many guys. When you get to do that, your team morale is better. It has been a tough year for a lot of the guys. We haven't been up in ball games and, and haven't gotten to play as many at the end of games that, uh, like Mike Somerville, young man that came in, kicked the last extra point that may be his own, only opportunity to get in a ball game at Texas. And as he said with a smile walking off the field, I am now in the record books, and, and he will be in the record books for the rest of his life. So uh, his kids and his grandkids will, will sure enjoy that. Thursday night's game is really special. Like the OU game, it's national. But this one is more about uh, high school football in the state of Texas and the great traditions of the University of Texas and, and the Texas A&M Aggies. And uh, it'll be a fun challenge. A&M is playing really well right now. Um, and they're, they're playing so much better on defense. They're playing harder. Um, a lot of the same guys, but they're, they're really showing quickness. And, and they've done a great job in, in playing good defense across the front. Uh, you start looking at them, uh, Von Miller's as good a, a pass rusher as there is in America. Uh, we did a pretty good job with him last year, but he's, uh, uh, he's, he's got nine and a half sacks, I think. He's, just, uh, he's, he's been an amazing player this year uh, with them moving him around. And, and uh, you start looking at Michael Hodges. He's been the team leader, and uh, they're a 58% blitz team. So they're bringing a lot of people. They're moving a lot of people around. They try to stop the run and, and make you throw the ball. Uh, they line up like we do, very similar on defense with a 3-4, but then uh, they blitz a lot and bring the extra guy about 27% of the time to try to get a four-man rush on you. Offensively, they're, they're moving the ball really well. Uh, um, you start looking at Cyrus Gray. He's gained 100 yards the, the last number of weeks, uh, but also Tannehill's taking care of the ball. He's moving it around. They're um, uh, running up and down the field on people. Uh, had some trouble on Saturday night with uh, Nebraska's off, uh, defense, but uh, that pass defense is really, really difficult to throw against, and, and very few people do complete passes. But they're, they're taking care of the ball so much better than they were early in the year, and they're playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. It will be senior day on Thursday. Our five-year seniors are 50 and 14 with four, uh, four bowl games, two of them BCS games, one that they won against Ohio State, one that they lost against Alabama. And our four-year seniors are 40 and 11 and they've been to BCS games the last two years. So we're, we're proud of our seniors. Uh, this year hasn't been an easy one for them. They've, they've hung them in there and kept the kids fighting, and they uh, haven't given up. And I think we'll see a great effort out of them Thursday night. Coach, this is the first time in your tenure that you've been an underdog going into this game. Do you like the role you're in being the underdog, home team, your team is underachieved. Do you like this role? And you're, you're the underdog this week? Uh, Ed, you just said, do I like the fact that our team's underachieved? No, I didn't. Now, I know you're a great, great person in the media, uh, a radio celebrity, but I'm going to let you re-ask that question, Ed, because your, your comrades here are sitting here looking at me like, how are you going to answer that one? Okay, Coach, do you like the role as the underdog in this game? No. Why not? Or any other, because it means you have underachieved. <laughs> No, you, 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 it is what it is. A&M's playing well. They, they struggled at the first of the year, and they've turned it around playing really well. And we have not played well. Hopefully Saturday afternoon will, will be a, um, a game that we can um, get more confidence from and get some momentum going into the game. But we'll need our crowd Thursday night. A&M's playing really well with a lot of confidence, and we're down to where we have to win the game, or it's the seniors' last game of their career. So uh, we're going to play hard, and we're going to play well. Just need to help you with a question, Ed. I'm sorry. I just. Uh... Coach, can you talk about the running game? Obviously, good numbers for Cody. As far as Cody and DJ in terms of the, the touches, were you and Coach Davis happy with, with what you saw there? Yes, uh, Greg will be here in a minute, but uh, especially happy with Cody. I mean, he to to get 127 yards and 89 in the first half. Uh, we were told walking out on the field before the game that uh, Fozzie couldn't play, and and that's a shocker because we thought he was going to play. And DJ got those touches uh, in the running game and did a great job with it. I was really, really proud of him. He protected the ball. And most of his yards were outside, but he, he made some really good uh, yards on the sweep. Uh, but Cody made the tough yards, and we were proud. One of the things we haven't done very well in the last couple of years is, is uh, uh, grind the ball in the fourth quarter. And Cody was able to go out there and line up and grind the ball. Then Ryan Robeson came in and finished it off. But we were able to control the clock. Uh, in the first quarter and the fourth quarter, and and I thought those were keys to the game, and and excuse me, and they had really good ball security. 
neither one of them had anything close to a fumble, and, and that's so key because I, I really think the reason of all the things that have happened to us this year, negative, the reason we're in the spot we're in, we've done a horrible job in turnover ratio. And if you don't win turnover ratio, we've talked about turnover ratio and explosive play since we've been here. If you go back and look last year, we were great. This year, we're awful in turnover ratio. So to, to win the game on Thursday, we've got to knock some balls loose and we've got to, to protect the ball. Well, it is a concern. You're not sure about Kyle Hicks and, and whether he'll be able to play or how long. So you, you're still starting three freshman, redshirt freshman types in there. Uh, but you, most of their blitz is what we do. So these guys have seen it all fall. So we do feel like that's an advantage for us and for A&M offensively that we're, we're seeing two very similar uh, schemes on defense. And, and most of their blitz is that they just bring a fourth guy. It's a three-man line with a fourth blitz, so it's not like they're bringing three or four. They do that some, but 27% but of that 58% is just a fourth down guy, so that's not as complicated as when they start bringing the, uh, both backers. Mike, can you speak to Tannehill from a productive receiver to a very productive quarterback in the middle of the season? Yes, you, you, he's a coach's son, so you, you see he manages games, and he's very confident, and he's very unselfish, and uh, he's not forcing turnovers, he's not forcing the ball, he can run with his feet good enough to make plays, and he's a very accurate passer, so he's done a tremendous job for him. Mac. Your team has done so well against the Nebraskans, the Oklahomans, that sort of thing. Are you glad that this rivalry game is the motivation needed, you know, to still talk about the bullets? Yes, I was proud that uh, the guys played hard last Saturday because that, that was something that has changed since earlier in the year. When we played an emotional game, we've come back with someone that, that didn't get the same publicity nationally and haven't played well. So I wasn't sure, um, obviously, if, if they had learned from that, but they did. They played really hard. They played well. And um, uh, even when the opponent was a lesser opponent, that was something I wanted to see. Would they not care who we were playing? And and play well. Uh, this one will be easy from a motivational standpoint. They know all the players. Uh, Connors Wood's brother even works there. Uh, so uh, there will be a lot of talk during the week be between the two teams, but there's great respect in this game, and it has not been a mouthy game. It has not been a push-and-shove game. It's been a game about high school football in the state of Texas and, and this great rivalry on Thanksgiving for many, many years, and, and uh, I fully expect it to be that way Thursday night. Mike's done a, a tremendous job with his team. Um, and and, and I, I think both will come out with a lot of respect. Mac, will you be scoreboard watching this weekend, win or lose, to see how many teams across the country are bowl eligible? No. No, I'll, I'll worry about us. And if we're bowl eligible, I'll, I'll be happy because we get another game. Uh, and that's what I want for these seniors. Coaches report that the NCAA may look at some five and seven teams if they don't fill enough bowls. you think five and seven teams deserve to go to a bowl? Gosh, Ed, I've never been in a position to think about that, so I hope on uh, Thursday night about 11 o'clock I'm not thinking about that. Coach, in terms of preparation for the Aggies, as far as your defensive coaches, do you just look at the last five games? How much can you take from the games that Gerard Johnson played? You do. You, you, you look at uh, the Tanny Hill run offense because it's changed some, um, and, and you, you put most of your eggs in that basket. Uh, even though you look at A&M year-round. Our coaches were over at the offices probably at 2 o'clock on Saturday night uh, breaking down everything they could get. And then Sunday we had the Nebraska video that we spent time with. Uh, and when you look at the uh, chronological sense of the game, this is Wednesday. So we met with the guys uh, uh, this morning at, at 6. They ate breakfast about 5.15. Uh, so we may, met with them from 6 to 7. We'll practice this afternoon from 4.30 to 6 because we've got labs all day. And then guys have classes starting at 6 o'clock, so we'll have to let them out probably 5.30, 5.40 to try, try to run to class. Uh, but uh, uh, this will be Wednesday's practice because if you look at, at tomorrow, then becomes Thursday. Wednesday becomes Friday when you, you count Thursday as a Saturday game. So um, you're, you're trying to get back to as much of a normal routine as you can, but these short weeks are, are very, very different when you look at preparation. No, I think they can take the, the 
good plays they've made over the, the stretch here that has not been good and understand that we, we didn't make enough together to win. And on Saturday, they played as a team. They answered each other. Uh, they took care of the ball. They forced turnovers. The turnovers were either four scores or in a position that the defense gave the offense the ball where they could score more easily. So field position was better. And what we tried to do is, is take that video and, and talk to them again about this is what you do to win. I mean, it, it, regardless of who it is, this is the winning combination and, and not making some good plays on both sides of the ball, but giving up a big play or, or turning the ball over four times or, or, or not getting things in the kicking game that we need to, to be successful. So we really felt like that uh, because there is a lot of youth on this team, they'll come out of this game with a lot more confidence. And, and we saw that we practiced yesterday, uh, the day after the game, which we've never done uh, at a high speed tempo and we did last night and uh, the guys came out and were really excited about the game. Well, the, because again, there's so many of them, uh, they took what they learned back to their coaches and sat down and talked to them about what they saw and, and um, I'm sure they'll talk to you about that today when they come up. But it was unique that we walk off the field and, and can get dressed and go immediately to uh, to watch the game. Now, some of them, especially the linemen, probably got there at halftime because they were going to eat. Don't think there's any question about that. Do you think that this game will have a certain style to it? The Aggies have been so high scoring for much of the season. This Saturday night, they found themselves in a defensive game. Do you think Thursday's game is going to have a certain feel to it? I think more than ever in my career this year, you can't ever tell what's going to happen on Saturday. It's been amazing to me that uh, uh, you're not seeing some teams just get better. Just They play awful one week and then great the next week. And uh, it's, it's like they come out as different teams. So uh, I don't think anybody – it's one of the great things for a fan right now. I don't think anybody knows what's going to happen in a football game anymore. You just better grab and hold on and, and handle it as it happens. We felt like that uh, you, you never know as a team, offensively we played as well as we'd played all year, but A&M wasn't as good on defense last year as they are this year. Uh, defensively, we weren't satisfied with the way we played in this game last year, but A&M was much better offensively than they were defensively. So uh, I think that uh, we need to build off of the four-day week that we had last year offensively, and hopefully they can – uh, come into this game with the same confidence they walked out of the one Saturday afternoon with. And, <laughs> excuse me, and defensively, uh, we think we learned a few things from last year that will help us uh, in the shorter week. Back, will you, whether it's before the game or after the game, will you reach out to Vince and what he's going to do right now? Uh, yes, I always text him. I haven't had a chance because we just, I mean, we, we haven't even been able to look up. I've, I was standing out there at practice uh, last night trying to say, now this is, I think this is Tuesday or is it Wednesday? I'm not sure where we are or what day we are. And uh, I think what happens in, in, um, in modern day is that uh, you really want to know the circumstances of everything that happens. And it's very, very difficult to make decisions of who's right and who's wrong, even if you have all those facts. But I know around here there's so many rumors and there's so many things that people say was said and said happened that, that really didn't even happen and wasn't even true uh, that until I talk to Vince, I'm not going to make any decisions on whether I feel like he uh, was right or wrong or what he said. I, I haven't seen anything other than I know uh, that it, it didn't seem good at the end of the game. And other than that, I, I haven't seen any reports. Okay, Coach, thank you. Thank you.